This AIMS Professional Learning Challenge focuses on reading, inquiry, and collaboration through Socratic seminars. Our I Can statement is I can promote critical reading, inquiry, and collaboration in my classroom by hosting Socratic seminars. Socratic seminars are a student-led discussion based on Socrates' method of student inquiry rather than teacher lecture. The strategy elicits student ownership, deep thinking, critical questioning, academic vocabulary usage, and a rooted sense of community. Students come to the discussion having read at least one complex text about which they have prepared questions. They then ask their peers these questions and build meaning together. It is important to note that the emphasis of Socratic seminars is to arrive at a deeper understanding of the content collectively, rather than debating one another over who is right and who is wrong. When we look at our nine aims look for, what is truly incredible about Socratic seminars is that they achieve the collaboration, inquiry, and reading sections of our look force. Let's take a look at the instructional framework in more detail. When we look at the collaboration section of the instructional framework, we'll see that Socratic seminars allow us to achieve scores of three in five of the categories. So when it comes time to fostering collaboration and community, planning for intentional and purposeful collaboration, using collaboration with student interdependence, using collaboration to rehearse ideas, and creating a student-centered classroom th through collaboration and risk-taking, Socratic seminars allow us to transfer all ownership over to the students, thus scoring maximum points in all of those categories. A very similar story unfolds in the inquiry section. In the inquiry section, there are five overall categories, and, and in three of those categories, Socratic seminars allow us to achieve scores of three. Lastly, in the reading section, there's going to be a little variation here depending upon how you set up the reading in preparation for the seminar, but definitively, we'll be looking at three sections that we've helped clarify vocabulary and symbols, that there's been a purpose for reading and that meaning has been extended beyond the text. Depending again upon how you structure your reading, you may also score within clarifying syntax and structure and interacting with the text during reading. So let's talk about different ways that you can structure the Socratic seminar. The first way is to hold one large seminar where you have all of your students circled up into one big circle and everyone is contributing to the discussion simultaneously. I would only recommend using this structure if you have a small class and moreover if everyone in your small class is is vocal and frequently willing to talk. Otherwise, quieter voices will get drowned out in this format. Another format that your Socratic seminar could take is the simultaneous structure. In this structure, you have multiple miniature Socratic seminars occurring simultaneously. This is not a structure that I have used before or that I have seen used before in part because it's really difficult for the teacher to assess what is going on when there are so many conversations occurring simultaneously. Typically, I think of Socratic seminars as a summative assessment. Um, so it would be a shame if you're listening to this Socratic seminar over here and missing out on the conversation over here and missing out on providing feedback and providing a grade to students based off of something that they said over here while you were listening over here. Uh, if you were to do a simultaneous Socratic seminar, I would picture it being more informal in nature, maybe just to have some class discussion before coming back together for another purpose. I would not do a simultaneous Socratic seminar as a summative assignment. Yet another structure that you could take is the inner outer circle method, where students in the inner circle are discussing the topic and they are paired with someone in the outer circle. Now what the people in the outer circle are doing is they're taking notes on what the people on the inner circle are saying and occasionally will pause the conversation so that the inner circle partner can talk with the outer circle partner and be coached on 
what they need to do better to contribute more meaningfully to the conversation. Sometimes too, the inner circle and the outer circle will flip. So maybe for the first half of class, the inner circle is discussing and then we'll, the timer will go off and the inner circle becomes the outer circle, the outer circle becomes the inner circle. I've used this structure before and I definitely like it a lot. However, it can pose some challenges if you have students who are absent. Um, so if you have an inner circle person whose outer circle person is absent, now they're not getting that feedback unless you decide to start grouping people into groups of three spur of the moment. Um, but it, it can get a little tricky in terms of absences. For that reason, a structure that I really like is the triad seminars method. That's similar to the inner circle, outer circle, where again, we have an inner circle and these folks are the ones who are participating in the discussion. But now each inner circle person has two outer circle people who are able to coach and guide them. Uh, so this is great in case of absences. In all likelihood, not all three people would be absent. Um, so you can have people kind of swap out of their roles. Maybe a co-pilot becomes a pilot, or maybe you end up with just one pilot and one co-pilot. And we kind of end up with a greater meeting of the minds because now we have three people sharing out their thoughts and experiences, and that can amount in really rich, small group conversations in addition to the rich whole group conversation that is already occurring within the seminar. So this is the structure that we're going to focus on during this challenge. If that ends up being not the best structure for your class, that is perfectly fine. But this is what I'm going to emphasize. And in fact, this is the structure that we're about to see some example videos taken in Mr. Elliott's eighth grade history course. In the Socratic seminar that we are about to see, students have taken notes on various groups of people and their experiences during westward expansion. We'll hear them discussing people like women in the West. We'll hear them discussing the role of African Americans in the West. We'll hear uh, them talk about Native Americans, etc. And they're all discussing how these groups interacted during westward expansion. Let's take a look. Um, Andrew Jackson outlined the Indian removal policy. He wanted the American Indians to be removed because he thought of them as bloodthirsty savages as uh, so he could expand and develop the future. Uh, I don't know what the Bible says, are you? Uh, Andrew Jackson said that Native Americans need to leave or they can become slaves. Had 
It's like the first burger because it brings, I mentioned that it brings over 1,000. So someone says source, so if you're about to ask a question, say source one, and they say, <laughs> they say source one, and like, they say source one, paragraph five, flip to source one so you can get more information on the topic. So let's just say source, um, source six, frontier women, in paragraph five. So then you flip over to paragraph five. And then any information that they ask about the course, you can say, alright? So just try and focus on, like, doing more, alright? I think we can all agree that that was an incredibly impressive Socratic seminar. And that's due to all of the work that Mr. Elliot did ahead of time to set his students up for success. Let's take a look at the steps that he took. First, he exposed students to the concept of Socratic seminars in the rubric before beginning the content. He let them know right away that they were about to be reading some texts that they would then discuss in groups. And he showed them the rubric so they knew immediately what the expectation for that group discussion was going to be. He went one step further then and had the students use the rubric themselves to assess videos of Socratic seminars um, from other schools. So not only were they seeing the rubric, they were using the rubric, which really familiarized themselves with what they should do in a Socratic seminar and what they should not do in a Socratic seminar. When students read, Mr. Elliot had students use the avid mark the text strategy with the clear purpose of composing questions and gathering evidence for the seminar. So he had them interacting with all six texts that they used in the seminar, and they knew that they had to interact meaningfully so that they were prepared for the seminar and that they were prepared to get a good grade on the summative assignment. Lastly, he had the students select the groups and their roles so that they were comfortable. They were working with people that they felt comfortable working with, and everyone had a role that they were comfortable with. So no one was in the inner circle speaking who wasn't comfortable doing so. So what now? At this point, go through the resources provided in the Socratic Seminar folder to find instructional materials that you can use in your classroom. Then select text that you can use to fuel the seminar. Teach students how to participate in a Socratic seminar. What are the behaviors you're looking for? What are the behaviors you don't wanna see? Host your seminar and then submit your evidence for points.